chapter 69 of shrimad bhagavatam indra gets his vajra om namo bhagavate vasudevaya vitra led the asura host against that of the devas he was so powerful that the devas could not withstand his prowess he would not be quelled by anything the astras of the devas were all ineffectual and they were all they were swallowed by the sun of twashta vritra glowed with added brilliance because of the divine astras which were now lodged inside him the devas fled from his presence in terror and panic they rushed to adi purusha narayana the lord of lords appeared before them and said be without fear i will suggest to you a method by which you can destroy vritra i suggest that you approach the great rishi called dadichi he is the one who taught brahma vidya to the ashwini twins in return the ashwini kumaras have granted him immortality you go to dadichi and ask him for his strong and powerful bones dadichi is the one who gave the impregnable arm to the twist impregnable armor to twist he gave it to his son and the son in turn gave it to you indra if you take the ashwin twins with you and with their help ask the rishi for his body he will renounce it for you out of his bones ask your architect vishwakarma to fashion a dreadful weapon call it vajrayudha backed up as you always are with my glory you will kill vritra with the vajra you will cut off his head and after his death you will get back your glory and all your astras will come back to you the devas went to the presence of dadichi and stood before him in a shame faced manner they fell at his feet in a hesitant voice indra told him that he had come to ask a favor of the old man the old man sat silently smiling at them waiting for indra to continue indra told him about his desire for his body for his bones and explained the reason why dadichi smiled scathingly at him at them and said death my dear devas is abhorrent even to the most dispassionate of men you have lost your senses even if the lord himself asks for it man finds it difficult to part with his life i do not desire to die i have been granted immortality and i do not see why i should forgo the privilege for your sake i do not wish to die and i will not renounce this body the deva said my lord you are a great man full of love and compassion for those who are suffering how can you speak such words if a man has the good fortune to possess the means to cure himself of his pains he will never ask another man for help but we are in trouble and we cannot do anything by ourselves to ward off this trouble we are driven to ask this favor of you though we realize that it is a heinous thing we are doing this is the only thing which will save us please grant it to us dadichi said you have trapped me with an argument which cannot be disputed a man who will not help those who are in trouble does not inherit the higher worlds i am prepared to die for you a really compassionate man will consider the pain of others as though it is his own and knowing it if he does not do anything to help others to alleviate the their pain there is then no difference between him and a tree i will help you in your distress be without any worry i will abandon this body of mine for your sake and because narayana himself has said that it will be of use to you dadichi set his mind on the brahman and went into a samadhi he then renounced his body which the devas coveted indra took the mighty bones of the brahmin and gave them to vishwakarma the divine architect fashioned out of them the terrible weapon the thunderbolt which is famed the world over by the name vajra ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्री कृष्णार्पणमस्त चैप्टर 70 ऑफ श्रीमद् भागवतम कॉम्बैट बिटवीन इंद्र एंड वृत्र ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय माउंटेड ऑन हिज फेवरेट एलिफेंट ऐरावथ इंद्र सेट आउट टू फाइट विद वृत्र लेड बाय इंद्र द होस्ट ऑफ द देवास ट्रैवल्ड टुवर्ड्स द स्पॉट वेयर वृत्र स्टूड विद हिज आर्मी 
on the banks of the river narmada a dreadful battle was fought between indra and vritra on the one side was vritra with the host of the asuras the chief among them being namuchi shambhara hayagriva puloma vrishaparva heti praheti mali and sumali and of course many others indra had with him the 11 rudras the 8 vasus the 12 adityas the two ashwins the four pitris the 49 agnis 49 maruts the 10 vishva vedas vishvedev vishvadevas and many others the battle was frightful this time the devas were not affected by the astras of the asuras they stood firm like good men who are unaffected by the wounding words of small minded men the deva host was gaining the upper hand and the asuras were abandoning the field of battle and running away seeing the demoralization which had set in vritra was quite angry with his men he raised his voice and said listen to me all of you death is something no one can avoid once you are born you are certain to die death comes in a myriad forms but eventually it does come to each and every one when such is the case when you know you have to die some time or other is it not right that you should stop and consider about this death for a moment when death which is unavoidable brings fame and a name and a good place in the heavens after this life on earth is not death then desirable abandoning this mortal frame when in yoga and dying without turning one's back in the field of battle are both desirable and both are not possible for everyone it is given only to the chosen few and you should therefore be not afraid of death considering it is but a necessary end to life the asuras heeded him not vritra then turned towards the devas and spoke in anger he said what is the use of harassing these poor asuras who are fleeing from you it brings no credit to you if you hurt those who are running away from you in fear if you are really brave come and face me and see if you can fight with me vritra sent up a mighty roar and it sent shaft or fear through the hearts of the devas with his trident raised aloft vritra entered the army of the devas and single handed began to destroy it indra hurled a huge mace at vritra who caught it with his left hand brandished it and flung it at the elephant called airavata the elephant retreated a few paces wounded as it was by the mace seeing his opponent in trouble vritra did not use the mace again indra was getting ready to attack him and vritra laughed at indra and said it is fortunate that i am fighting you a great sinner you killed my brother your preceptor a brahmin who was bent on doing good to you i will run my trident through your heart and thus clear the debt i owe my brother who is dead why are you not trying to hit me with the vajra are you by any chance afraid of me afraid that it may fail you this vajra of yours has been fashioned from the body of a great man at the behest of lord narayana himself it owes its power to dadichi and to the sanctity bestowed on it by narayana use the vajra on me wherever the lord is there will be victory i for one will think on the lord and rest my thoughts on him if i am killed i will only be given up giving up this sinful body i am not grieved use your vajra on me are you afraid that it will prove ineffectual against me like a request is ineffectual when it is made to a sinner are you afraid that the vajra will fail you like your mace did do not worry this vajra which has been blessed by the lord will not fail you you are sure to kill me indra was standing like one amazed by the unexpected these were the sort of words one never expected an enemy is to speak the entire army was listening as though spellbound to the words of vritra vritra continued as for me i have set my mind on the feet of narayana and when i am killed i will find release from this body which is but a bondage 
I will reach the state which yogis attain because of the tapas they perform. This Lord, when he loves his bhakta, does not give him the wealth of the three worlds. Do you know why? He knows that wealth is the cause of hatred, of fear, mental pain, arrogance, quarrels, unhappiness and extreme fatigue. Indra, believe me, the Lord grants freedom from all these and more. The thrill of his gifts can only be realized and cannot be described. A wealthy man can never know it. Suddenly, Vritra lost all thought of the battlefield and of his surroundings. His mind went to Narayana and he said, O Lord, please make me the servant of your servants. Make my mind think only of your qualities. Let my voice sing of only your greatness. Let my body perform only such actions which are dear to you. I want you, my Lord, and there is no desire in me for the reams of Brahma or the state of Dhruva. I do not want to be the emperor on the earth, nor do I desire to rule the nether world. I do not want moksha, nor do I want proficiency in the many yogas. Lord, I am aching for you like a little fledging aches for its mother bird, like a teethered calf aches for the mother cow, like a woman pines for her lord who has travelled far from her to unknown countries. I am caught up in the vril pool called birth. Please grant me freedom from it. Let me love your bhaktas because that is the sure way to become dear to you. Because of the wheel of maya which you have thrown in my path, I am attached to my body, to my wife, my children, my home and many other possessions of mine. Please withdraw this wheel and help me to break this attachment to the things of the world. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Shri Krishna Pranamast Chapter 71 of Srimad Bhagavatam The Killing of Vritra Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Vritra prepared himself for the fight. With his trident raised aloft, he rushed towards Indra shouting, Indra, prepare yourself to die. He brandished this trident and threw it at Indra with great force. It coursed through the sky like a planet on fire. Indra raised his Vajra and cut off the arm of Vritra, the arm which had hurled the trident. Indra cut off the arm into little bits. With his arm cut off, Vritra. With his arm cut off, Vritra was in great pain and he was mad with anger and pain. He rushed towards Indra and with his other arm he held an iron club. Indra had the Vajra in his hand. When Vritra hit Indra and his elephant on the chin with his club, the force of the blow was so great that the Vajra slipped from the right hand of Indra. Ashamed of himself, Indra would not stoop down to the ground to pick it up in the presence of his enemy. Vritra said, Indra, why do you hesitate? This is not the time to think. Not should one grieve over what has happened. Take up your Vajra and kill me, your enemy. Victory and defeat, Indra, are daily happenings in the life of every man. One cannot win all the time. It is all in the hands of the Lord who controls the world and the happenings in the world. Poor ignorant people do not know the truth and they consider the body to be the end and aim of existence. Indra, take note of one truth. This world, why? This entire universe is under the sway of some power, something other than all the many we have known. Have we not seen animals and forms of women cut out of wood to perform antics in a puppet show? Do they not move as the master of ceremonies guides them? Have they any power to act on their own? Even so, we are all moved up by the strings in his hands. The Lord preserves with the help of living beings and he also destroys with the help of the same living beings. We are but instruments in his hands. Even a man without desires, even he becomes different when he is victorious, he begins to get attached to life, to glory, to fame and wealth. That is the reason why the wise say that one should have equanimity. When faced with victory and defeat, 
fame and infamy death and life pain and pleasure when one is confronted with these opposites one should neither be too depressed nor too elated the three qualities sattva rajas and tamas are parts of nature and they have nothing to do with the atman one who has realized the atman who has reached, reached the brahmi state will never be affected by the opposites just look at me my weapon is broken by you and my arm has been cut by you this fight between you and me is like a game where the stake is the life of either of us and no one is sure as to who is going to win it is all just a gamble let us leave the result on the laps of the gods and do our duty to the best of our ability come indra let us fight on indra was overcome with admiration for this great opponent of his who was so wise who was so noble such a great philosopher he said i am amazed at the greatness that is part of you your mind is far above the things of this world you are a siddha you have transcended maya which deludes all men you have nothing of the asuric temperament in you asura as you are you are expected to be full of rajoguna strangely enough it is not so at all you are a pure satvik and your mind is lost in the lord i salute your greatness they began to fight according to the rules of dharma vritra hurled a terrible pestle at indra which was broken into pieces by indra's vajra the other arm of vritra was cut off by indra vritra then opened his mouth wide it stretched like a cavern between the earth and the sky he swallowed indra and his elephant too there were horror in the deva camp when this happened indra however had been protected by the narayana kavacha and he did not die though he had been swallowed by vritra instead of being killed indra with his vajra cut open the insides of vritra and emerged unharmed he then took up his vajra and cut off the head of vritra even as everyone was looking vritra's life came out of his body in the form of a glow and lost itself in the lotus feet of narayan om namo bhagavate vasudevaya shri krishna arpanamast chapter 72 of shrimad bhagavatam brahma hatya papa om namo bhagavate vasudevaya when vritra died the entire world and the heavenly world were without fear and everyone was happy indra was not earlier when vritra was harassing them the devas implored indra to hurry up and kill vritra he was not quite willing he was afraid of the dread sin brahma hatya he said earlier when i killed vishwarupa this sun this sin clung to me for one year because of the kindness of earthly objects i was able to rid of it if i kill vritra who has been born out of the sacrificial fire this sin will again hold me under its sway and who is going to share it with me the rishi said do not fear we will officiate at an yagna the ashwamedha which should be performed by you the yagna will cleanse you of your sin indra looked dubious they said ashwamedha is a yaga where the lord is worshiped he will cleanse man of all sins by singing his names man will be rid of great and fearful sins like the killing of a brahmin of a father cow of his mother or his guru when such is the case and again when you are killing him for the sake of the good of the world this sin will not cling to you with his confidence restored by the rishis indra killed vritra with the killing brahma hatya pursued indra like avenging fury only he suffered and no one else shared his sufferings indra fled all over the surface of the earth and finally entered the lake called manasa for a thousand years he took refuge inside the stalk of a lotus and stayed without accepting his share of the havis in the many yagnas which were performed the lake manasa was guarded by lakshmi and brahma hatya could not come near it all the while when he spent the time in the stalk of the lotus indra thought up methods by which he could shake off his 
sin. He realized that tapas was the only way. Because of the penance he performed for the thousand years, Indra was finally cleansed of Brahmahatya and was summoned to the heavens by Brahma. Indra then performed the Ashwamedha. During his absence, King Nahusha had been requested by the gods to rule the heaven to officiate as Indra. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Shri Krishna Arpanamastu